Hello and welcome to my series Learn Radiology with Dr. Anil Joshi. Today's topic is on radio physics that is designing of X-ray room. Designing of X-ray room is important not only for the technicians who are working, not only for the patients working, but also relatives of the patient who are coming with the patient who are outside the room. So also the doctors which are working on the radiology units. So it is essential that we must know radiation safety factors, inverse square law, and we should design the rooms accordingly so that it will be safe for everybody. Now brief disclaimer and we'll go to the topic proper. Now what are the general guidelines? A comparative room size for different radiation units is different. It is different for CT, it is different for the X-ray units that also depending on the KV it generates and also for a mammography unit it is different. Let's see in this lecture topic X-ray unit room size. It shall be more than 18 millimeter square for general purpose and for conventional radiography as well as for the fluoroscopy equipment. So the room has to be more than 80 millimeter square. It cannot be less than that. Now for CT, a gantry room has got different scale. It has got 25 millimeter square because it uses high radiation X-rays and it is also for longer time. Now not more than one unit of any type shall be installed in the same room and no single dimension of these X-ray rooms shall be less than 4 millimeter square. So that is the optimum size of X-ray unit. And number two, you cannot install or two X-ray units or two units generating X-ray in the same room. Now mammography unit, the room size shall not be less than 10 millimeter square and no single dimension of the room shall be less than 3 meter. So this is a dimension for the room, X-ray units as well as mammography units. Now what should be the wall thickness? If the X-ray unit is located in a residential complex that we call as a non-moving population, maybe a residential area, maybe an office, in that area the is restriction or the wall thickness has to be meticulously followed. The wall of the X-ray unit on such primary X-ray beam falls are not less than 35 cm or 14 inches wall thickness or its equivalent. So let's divide the room into two. One thing is where the primary beam falls that is a straight from the X-ray unit that has to be 14 inches and remaining wall can be up to 23 cm or 9 watts, 9 inch thickness either of the brick or equivalent of the concrete or that of the lead. Now there is a shielding equivalent to at least 23 millimeters or 9 inch thick brick or 2 millimeter lead in front of the doors and the windows of the X-ray room. Now it is very important that the X-ray room windows shall not be kept open. They are needs to be covered at least after 9 feet. Now it is important that they should be shielded with the lead sheets. The wall thickness can be depending on the whether you are using bricks, whether you are using concrete or whether you are going to reinforce it with the lead. Now the ceiling must have a thickness of concrete density that should be more than 6 inches. So ceiling and floor if it is situated in between. Most of the units are not on ground floor. So the upper concrete as well as lower concrete has to be 9 inch thick. Now what is the options in shielding material? X-ray equivalent must be installed in adequately shielded rooms to ensure that public in vicinity of X-ray installations are not duly exposed to X-ray radiation. The adequacy of shielding depends on the material and thickness used for this purpose. A different material can be used for shielding depending on the convenience. However, brick or concrete are considered the best material since they are easily available, economical and have a good structural strength. Now here we are showing control room. By and large, most of the X-ray units have got their control room inside the large room which is shielded by the lead sheets or the lead dividers. Now for equipment operating at 125 kV or above should have a separate control room. Now most of our X-ray units we do not go up to 125 kVs. However, if the unit has got it, then you will have to go for different console room. Now you have to provide shielding directly and a viewing should be by a glass which has got 1.5 mm layer thickness. Then oral communication facilitates between the operator and the patient by a microscope, by a microphone. So microphone has to be there to communicate between patients and a operator. The X-ray unit operating below 125 kV in diagnostic radiology are exempted from the above class. In such a case, the control should be behind a mobile protective barrier or adequately thick protected by usually a lead sheets that is made. Now doors are also important. A lot of patients are opening the door which should not happen. It has to be locked when there is X-ray radiation going on. And also there is a, there is a restriction to the thickness or a material of the doors. The doors are lined with 2 mm thick lead 
shades with proper overlapping at the junction and the wall of 9 inches thickness. There should be proper overlapping, otherwise the gaps will result into leakage of the radiation. A viewing window is provided when there is a separate console. Not only for that reason, but even when there are partitions, a small window is given through which you can have a look at the patient. Now, lead glass of suitable dimensions are provided as a viewing window with 1.5 mm thick lead equivalent. Now, there is a mobile protective barrier also and control panel should be kept behind the mobile protective barrier of thickness 2 mm of the lead. So, it has to be seen. Now, here you are seeing how a X-ray room is generated. In that, there is X-ray unit. Now, you are seeing where the chest stand is. You are seeing the wall thickness, the entrances, the primary radiation should never be directed towards any of the doors or the windows. That is, the tube should not face these two things. Now, these are the routine X-ray units. With that, we are ending our short topic on the X-ray room design. There are other lectures covering CT room, mammography rooms and these are extensively also covered in a radiophysics larger lectures in which we have taken into consideration dimension, then inverse square law, how to protect itself. With this, I thank you for giving me your valuable time. Keep on learning, do good to the patient and in designing part also you take an interest so that you will not protect only yourself, you will protect the patient, their relatives also and the staff who are depending on you. Thank you.